never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor, and it can never be used to hurt you. I never forget who I am. I'm Big Polly Z, host of the Big Ass Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to episode number 18. It is the first day of June. And uh, we are back bringing you another dose of podcasty goodness. Speaking of goodness, uh, let's drink a bit, shall we? It's time to sacrifice a beer to the podcast gods in this week's edition of The Big Ass Beer of the Week. All right, brain. You don't like me and I don't like you. But let's just do this and I can get back to killing you with beer. It's a deal. This week's big ass beer comes from the Left Hand Brewing Company out of Longmont, Colorado. And what we have tonight is Left Hand Brewing's Nitro Milk Stout. Standard uh, 12 fluid ounce dark brown bottle. Uh, so I'm back to them delicious, delicious beers. And, uh, yeah, we got, uh, apparently, it's brewed on the banks of the mighty St. Vrain. It says that it is super smooth with soft roastness and mocha notes. Uh, that it says 6.0% alcohol by volume. And, uh, they want you to pour it hard. They don't want you to baby this thing. They want a bit of a head on there. And it's pretty fucking easy. Uh, the ingredients are as follows. Rocky Mountain Spring Water, malted barley, lactose, flaked oats, hops, and yeast. That is it, folks. So I've, I've had this, I have uh, had this uh, out of the tap there, I've had it like that, but I've never had it out of the bottle, so let's see how it differs uh, in taste uh, from the draft. Fuck it, let's do it, let's just uh, crack her open and get her done. Ah, well it smells delicious. Very dark in color. Mm, very nice aroma, very mellow, very smooth. Oh, this is great, great smooth beer. I mean, I love love the texture of any of the nitros, and the, the nitro pairs so well with the stouts and the porters. And uh, being a milk stout, it's a little bit on the sweeter side. You get the uh, the lactic sugars there. By far one of my favorites. Uh, this is really one that I do suggest you go out and try, even if you're not a stout fan. Again, that is Left Hand Brewing's uh, Nitro Milk Stout. So go and uh, get yourself one of them. And uh, while we're at it, let's uh, fire up a cigar. I am once again pairing my stout with a Swisher Sweet Calypso Cream because it paired very well uh, with the last beer that I had it with. So let's get that lit up. Ah, very nice. Zippo's in my other pants, so I'm using the old clicky lighter. Not as fun, but just as effective. So, uh, yeah, there we go. We got the milk stout going. We got the uh, cigar burning. It's time to get into the podcast. What do you say, folks? All right. So how's everyone been out there? I am back. I apologize for uh, no new episode last week, but I was beat, man. Uh, we had lots of crap to do around the house after being away for five days, and, uh, yeah, I apologize. I know I really got to be more on top of that, but... But like I said, I, I am sorry. I know this one's also late, but with the holiday weekend, and then we got another weekend coming up. So next week is going to be late, too. Once we get through these uh, vacations and whatnot, things will start to mellow out and get a little, little bit more regimented, as it were. So uh, the reason that I did not record last week was, of course, because we were in Lancaster, PA, attending the War of the Roses Tattoo Convention, representing the fine company that is Happy Guru Tattoo Butter. Pound Happy Guru Tattoo Butter on Twitter. Check it out. Uh, yeah. So, well, like I said, we were there uh, working the booth for our friends Josh and Candy. Uh, like I said, as you know, are the owners of Happy Guru. And uh, they make a whole bunch of skincare shit. But what we were there doing is uh, selling the aftercare product, the tattoo butter. And so we got to know some of the artists there and stuff. That was fun while repping them. We rolled in the Lancaster PA Thursday night after about a six-hour drive. Checked into our room, settled in, got in the old king-size bed, cranked the AC, and fell asleep watching Archer. It was lovely. Uh, so, yeah, man, day one, we uh, we show up to the event building. 
Not a big building. I guess the show was um, uh, 80 booths, 100 booths and 80 artists, something like that. So uh, we're, we're setting that up. We're getting our crap uh, set up in there, rolling it in on the dolly with the car. And on the uh, one corner, there's a big, big uh, booth set up with a couple artists, you know, getting ready to do their thing. And uh, they notice us. They see the shirts we're wearing. And apparently they were part of the Happy Guru sponsored artist team. So we kind of started chit-chatting with them. Uh, we went back out, grabbed another load. On the way back into the convention, uh, they're starting to lay out their their wares, you know, some of their uh, their portfolios, and then a couple uh, stencils that apparently they really wanted to do that day. One of which was the Baby Groot Funko bobblehead. Um, if you're not familiar with that, look it up. But uh, yeah, so my wife is really into Groot. She named her car Groot. She's got Groot figures, Groot stuffed animals, a lot of Groot stuff. Doesn't have a Groot tattoo yet. She's talked about it. So I go, hey, look at the baby Groot. And she says, oh, it's so cute. Her and the artist, uh, Rob, start talking about it. And it turns out he's really wanted to do this piece as a show piece and get it entered in the contest. No one has wanted to have it done. I apologize for the fucking dogs. Where was I? Okay, so, uh, yeah, Rob's got the stencil laid out there. It's the baby Groot. Uh, he apparently had wanted to uh, enter this as a, a uh, show piece the last couple of conventions he was at. Had no takers. So he tells my wife, I will do that tattoo on you for free. As long as you let me enter you into the uh, various competitions at the show. She uh, hadn't been hot for a minute, but in the end decided to get it. Uh, and had a nice wide open shoulder to do it on. So he did it up. And um, so... I guess, let's uh, give a shout out to Rob Holland of Stainless Custom Tattoos out of Dallas. Did an amazing, amazing job on her baby Groot with uh, kind of a space theme background. And it, it was just a great looking tattoo. Amazing piece. So she gets entered into the uh, small color category on day one of the show. And um, there was about 40 entrants. Small color had to be a color, full color tattoo piece done at the show that day. Under 8x8 eight eight in size. Goes up through the judging. Uh, third place gets called. She's still standing there. Second place gets called. She's still standing there. First place trophy gets called. And it is Emily and Bad Stainless. And she goes up, gets her trophy, pictures with Rob. And now she has an award winning tattoo on her arm. And it is a fantastic piece. I will uh, post pictures up shortly if you guys have not yet seen them on my uh, Facebook page so we wrap up the night so as day one is wrapping up uh, Emily gets her tattoo which was again done free and if you uh, check out the stainless custom tattoos website you know that their hourly rate is uh, like 150 an hour and there was a good five hour sit time plus you know he drew the custom stencil this wasn't some piece of flash so She's probably got like $700 worth of ink on her arm from uh, Rob for free. So that was awesome. And they were really cool guys. And uh, so, yeah. So we wrap up night one, back to the hotel. Sales and, in general, the show itself was slow. So our, our main goal was not to go there and get free tattoos and mingle. So, unfortunately, uh, we weren't hitting on all cylinders sales-wise, but no one was. Uh, we were told this is one of the worst shows a lot of these artists have ever been to. Um, yes, yeah, so, sorry about that, I'm outside, and it's fucking noisy. Day two, we get back to the show, set up around 11 o'clock, and the booth across from us is Hidden Arts Tattoo out of Harrisburg, PA. One of the artists sitting there goes by the name Tattoo Juice, and, uh, he's rocking a Packers lanyard with, like, his ID on it, and his, like, toolbox he carries all his tattoo gear in is a big Green Bay Packers, uh, toolbox, so I'm like... Fuck yeah, this dude is going to uh, give me a tattoo while I'm here. So I, I talked to him, we chat about the Packers for a minute, and I tell him what I want, and um, I sit down with him probably around lunchtime that day, as Emily was manning the booth solo, as I did the day before when she was getting a tattoo. So I got a uh, the Packers G, I'm kind of like ripping out of my skin. Uh, again, tattoo G, he was a cool dude too, and... Um, only charged me 60 bucks, which was not bad at all. I sat for probably a solid two hours, and again, he spent that morning drawing the stencil up after I told him what I wanted. So, good deal again. Another cool guy. And now I got my first uh, piece of tattoo work uh, representing my favorite 
favorite sports team. So everyone else can argue about, you know, what jersey they're getting, what player they're getting, what new, you know, new era hat they're buying. Fuck all them. I'm wearing green and gold on my skin now till literally I'm dead and cold. So that rocks. And um, both uh, Rob there from Stainless and Tattoo Juice from the Hidden Arts were using the new style of tattoo guns called uh, rotary guns. And the experience is so much nicer than your traditional tattoo gun. It's quieter. Like, you would have almost not even known you're getting tattoo. It's not that incessant buzzing. And it's a lot lighter on the skin to the fact that there was times where it felt like he... Again, I apologize for the dogs. But as I was saying, the uh, the new guns are using... And there was the times you didn't even feel like you were getting tattooed. Like, it didn't feel like the tattoo was getting hammered into your arm. It didn't have that buzzing sound, which I think psychologically makes you just feel like you're getting, you know, something drilled into you. So, very cool and very nice experience. And uh, so, I uh, also now leave the show with a souvenir permanently on my skin, so we're both happy, happy. Uh, day two wraps up. And uh, throughout all this time while we're at the show, uh, the show was going every day from noon till 11 roughly and so there was a lot of time on the floor and there was a uh, a performing stage set up there was different like various metal bands that were playing and rock bands and then at night they would have performers come in there was a burlesque show which was fun uh the one chick uh doing a little harley quinn uh cosplay thing and what we uh, me and emily decided is that burlesque show is just like a code word for a little too chubby to be a stripper <laughs> Because all these girls were, were attractive girls that were, let's say, just a little little bit softer on the midsection that you wouldn't see work in the main stage on a Friday night at your uh, typical titty bar. But they were, they were cute nonetheless, and they did their little shows and whatnot. So we got to watch that. Uh, there was, like, freak shows. It was, like, uh, you know, a guy punching his hand into a bear trap and doing the clothesmen's all over his body, running needles through his arm, and all sorts of wacky shit. So there was entertainment going on the whole show, which was pretty entertaining in its own right. And I guess we wrap up the show again. And then uh, day three we roll in. Sunday is a short day, 12 to 8. So we set up the booth one more time. Uh, We go and canvas the show that day, uh, making connections with all the artists that were there that we handed out our free samples to the day previous again trying to not you know the the main goal of the show was not to sell individual jars of the tattoo butter to customers but to book some of these artists to do a bulk order so we did that i don't know at this time uh if anyone has contacted josh and done a bulk order so i can't tell you if we did good or not but Seemed like a lot of people were interested, and he makes a hell of a product, and the artists that did use it had nothing but great things to say about it. So day three of the show is by far the slowest. Uh, a lot of artists started packing up their gear around 2.30, 3 o'clock. The show was supposed to run until 8 that day. By 5 o'clock, it was a ghost town. So uh, we decided to pull the plug on the boot at the same time. Emily uh, goes and starts talking to uh, Robin Wolf of Stainless one last time. He says he wants to enter her into the best of show category, which is, uh, you know, kind of the, the best tattoo that was done in over the three days of that show. So she uh, agrees, pays the $10 entry fee, and uh, we pack up the booth, load it back up into the hotel room, and then come back at 7 o'clock when it's time for judging. And uh, she... Goes up there. Now, like I said, things have really thinned out at this point in time, so the show wasn't exactly booming. There was a uh, six entrance in the best of show. Like I said, go back to day one of the show, 40 entrance roughly for the best small color piece. Now she's going up against six. Was this only because six people thought that their work was good enough to get in there? I don't think so. I think it was just that dead. But regardless, she again goes up, gets judged. There's a little controversy because... Now Rob is sitting in on the judging panel with one of his own pieces in, um, in the in the contest. So he abstains from voting and scoring her tattoo. Uh, picks a different piece to win, um, but the one there was a three judge panel, and um, the one judge was emphatic that the group tattoo was the best. The other judge in the middle had picked uh, Emily's and another tattoo, so he was kind of a 50-50 split. And Rob said that he can't, in good conscience, vote for it because it's his. Basically, he's told that it doesn't matter, that it's by far the best piece, so swallow your pride, you're winning. Uh, So, 
She gets called up. Bad stainless and, uh, unfortunately, not Rob, but Wolf uh, awarded the giant like, Stanley cup size trophy as the uh, Best in Show tattoo. Photo uh, Photographer comes over, taking lots of pictures, blah, blah, blah. Tra- uh, trophies are awarded. And, uh, yeah, so that was fun. The owner of the, uh, or the, I don't know, owner, but the guy who was running the tattoo, a guy named Jesse, I think knew something was up, but... Uh, at that point in time, I don't think they were ready to do anything about it. He carries the big, giant trophy over, hands it to Wolf, and asks him, you know, hey, man, are you the one who really did this this tattoo? Wolf says yes, and he kind of just presses this giant, heavy trophy into his chest and goes, then I guess this is your fucking problem now, and, and walks away. So he knew something was hinky going on. He wasn't going to undo it. It was, I mean, it's a, just a fantastic tattoo. So it deserved a win. Unfortunately, the way it came down at the end uh, was... A little shady, but I don't think it really would have mattered who was up there at the time voting. She would have got the, the prize. So, that's that. Uh, we go to dinner that night. Robin uh, Wolf text Emily on Facebook, ask her where she's at. Let her know oh, we're at the uh, Golden Corral, grabbing some grub. So they meet her there, and uh, apparently was feeling grateful for what they you know they won and went to Walmart and bought her a little Groot like bobblehead gift set with a couple different little Grooty things, some earbuds, a solar bobblehead and some other shit. Gave her that as kind of a thank you for the whole thing. So she made out with a little prize package on top of the free tattoo. So she was thrilled. And for the most part, everyone we met there was really cool. Uh, the booth next to us was uh, Ocean's Tattooing from uh, Los Angeles, California. And when they showed up, they were a bunch of heavily tattooed, like, Latino dudes, Asian dudes, and they looked like they were going to be trouble. Nicest dudes in the world. Like, just cool, don't judge book by its cover, awesome dudes. To our other side of our booth, we had an Ink Master, Mystical Mike. If you recall, I believe he was from season two or three of the show. And Mystical Mike was a mystical cocksucker. Just a rude asshole. Um, apparently had a problem that... He wasn't promoted hard enough and blah, blah, blah. So he sent the whole fucking show dicking around on his skateboard and did one tattoo the entire show. So, and when we watched him interacting with people or even when we talked to him, he was just kind of a prick. He was an ego. For a guy that basically is just a reality show reject, he had this fucking attitude on him that whatever. So... Everyone, thumbs up, A+, plus, cool people, Mystical Mike, can go eat a bag of dicks. All in all, awesome time, though. We're going to definitely check out the uh, tattoo convention that's rolling up in August to the Niagara Falls Convention Center. So we're going to go as uh, guests and not uh, work it, but we will be there checking that out when that rolls around. Emily has plans on trying to hook up with uh, Rob again when they're here next spring at the uh, Philadelphia Tattoo Convention to try to get some more work done because she was really impressed with him. And the whole trip on on was awesome. I mean, Lancaster, PA was pretty cool. We didn't get to explore all that much of it because we were actually, you know, working at the convention. But in the mornings, we were able to hit up. There was some nice, uh, like, outlet malls and stuff. Uh, Emily got a nice pair of Asics, like, dirt cheap at the Asics outlet. We had the Croc store, the Coleman store. Uh, so that was neat. We got a little bit into the Amish country finally on Sunday, but it was a ghost town because it was Amish country on a Sunday, and they were all, you know praying or whatever so that's that and like i said the whole trip would have been great but we ran into a bit of car trouble on the way back uh we knew we had a little bit of a, a rot situation going on in the exhaust of the old uh cube and it, it it cracked which you know no big deal okay so it's a little loud a little rattly well no unfortunately it cracked and bent in such a way that the exhaust pipe was now pointing up into the bumper skin Exhaust is hot, bumpers are plastic, and filled with styrofoam. And yeah, it started smoking and smoldering and burned a hole in our bumper, so that sucks. And then, just when you thought that that was uh, as bad as things can get, we pick up some debris as we cross over the border into New York State, and we lose a tire. So, the trip kind of cost us a bit in the, uh, in the car side of things, but it was a cool experience, and I know we'd definitely do it again. Next time, we might rent a vehicle instead of putting all those miles and uh, wear and tear on our little Grooty Groot car. So, again, I just want to say uh, thank you to uh, Josh and Candy for giving us the opportunity to represent them. Hopefully, we did well. 
So on that, hope everyone had a uh, happy Memorial Day weekend, as that's what we were just uh, getting through. Another long weekend for everyone, including myself. And uh, yeah, just I hope you everyone kind of took a moment to reflect that it's not just about you know drinking beers and uh, barbecuing your your brats and your hot dogs. It is about fallen soldiers, the guys who gave you your fucking rights to be uh, obnoxious Americans. So yeah. And while you're at it, it was really, really hot this weekend. Man, take care of your pets. You know, don't leave them outside for long periods of time without water. Don't don't coop them up in a house, in a stuffy room. Certainly don't leave them in a car. Uh, they're like children, man, and you wouldn't do that to a kid. Don't do it to your fucking dogs. Um, I don't want to really get into it, but let's just say Josh and Candy, while they were away uh, in the Virginia Tattoo Convention, got some bad news because their dog sitter was a Apparently, a piece of shit. So, take care of your pets, folks. I would appreciate it. News team, assemble! It is, of course, time for big ass news. And the one story that you could not avoid over the last couple days was about um, Harambe. Harambe, I guess the. Uh, 17-year-old silverback gorilla from the Cincinnati Zoo that got a bullet to the face when a uh, three-year-old entered his habitat and Harambe decided that it looked like a fun ragdoll to drag around for a bit. Should have been pretty cut and dry. Giant, dangerous, alpha predator versus a human baby. Yeah, you gotta put the goddamn thing down. Oh no, but... Don't let the social media retards let you down, folks. There was plenty of them calling for the death of this child. Because, you know, gorillas are endangered and beautiful and majestic, and humans are scum and garbage and little more than cockroaches on this planet. It's, it's insane that you would even have to question the zoo and why they did this. If there was even a 1% or 2% chance... If that gorilla was going to kill that child, then you have to make sure there's a 100% chance that that baby gets out of there. The best way to do it is a 30-odd-6 to the fucking forehead. Turn him into a fucking uh, a hat and pants and, uh, and a shirt there. Make gorilla skin coats. I don't care. Dead. Why didn't you shoot him with the tranquilizer? I've seen that on cartoons. You go to sleep right away. No, a trank, one, hurts, they notice. It's a loud noise, bang, still comes out of a gun, and it doesn't knock you out immediately. Which means that now you got a more pissed off, giant, 700 pound fucking ape with a child. The kid would have been dead before Sleepy Time T hit good old Hammurabi or whatever the fucking stupid ass thing's name is. So, the, the, the fact that the people put so little value on human life, I mean, these are the same assholes that have no fucking problem calling for Trump's death. They love abortions. They cheer when cops get shot, but when the fucking gorilla gets shot, now they're out here crying. Fuck these people. It's, they, they're psychotic. They're fucking... They have mental issues. They're just garbage people. So, I give a thumbs up to the Cincinnati Zoo. Handle shit as it is. How a three-year-old got in there, I want to know. I understand how he gets away from his mother. And they hear people say, like, well, that's why I always have my children on leashes when we go to something like that. Children are fucking dogs. You don't put them on a leash. Was the mother inattentive for a couple minutes? Perhaps. Three-year-olds are fucking squiggly. They can get away from you. This one apparently was good at climbing shit, too, because God knows how he got into a gorilla enclosure. Kid's safe. Kid's, uh, was in and out of the hospital, so good for him. Again, don't mourn this stupid fucking gorilla. Don't be the same stupid sick fucks who were calling for the dentist's death after he shot Cease through the Lion. You're all fucking sick. Human lives, 100%, are more important than animal lives every single time. Never a question. So, that's really all I gotta say on that. I I, I can go, I just, it, it makes me ill to think that these people are serious about what they say. I think some of them just have to be shit to serve as just saying outrageous things just to get attention. But there are enough people out there that, that believe it seriously. So, see, like the two animals right here. I don't want to shoot them in the face, but if they keep being assholes, maybe they deserve it. Especially if they try to eat a three-year-old. So, 
That's all I got to say on uh, Jumanji or Patrick Ewing or whatever the fuck that gorilla's name was. Next story. Then put a bullet in his skull and fuck the brain hole. I don't want to see that or think of it again. Apparently that was some secret audio recorded in the zookeeper's office as they were deciding uh, what to do with uh, the big old gorilla there right before they grabbed the rifle and went out to take care of him. So that's an exclusive that uh, got leaked to the big-ass digital news team here. So keep that in mind, folks. 319! 319! It is time for Big Ass Sports. So your Stanley Cup finals are set. We got the Sharks versus the Penguins for your Stanley Cup. Pens lead the series uh, one zip going into game two today in Pittsburgh. So uh, we'll uh, keep you up to date on that. Other than that, uh, let's see. Uh, during the week, we got some Seahawks players questioning how serious Marshawn Lynch is to actually being retired. Rumor is that he may have a change of heart. He's going to sit out all of camp and be back for the regular season. We shall see. Marshawn is an uh, eccentric dude, so that might happen. He might just be uh, very, very retired. Who knows? So keep an eye on the old Marshawn Lynch there. I'll have the big-ass sports desk uh, keep me abreast on any breaking Marshawn Lynch news. Then we got another uh, NFL running back, Arian Foster, who uh, apparently will start shopping his skills to teams uh, sometime in July, recovering from a devastating knee injury last season he was cut by the Texans and is a free agent right now so Arian Foster could be landing somewhere like Denver Oakland or Miami I would say uh, in the coming months so keep an eye on that Doug Whaley did a little interview uh, regarding the Sammy Watkins injury and other nonsense and he said that he doesn't believe that human beings were meant to play football and then uh, walked back those comments quite a bit. But uh, I don't think that's that outrageous. I mean, it was stupid to say, uh, someone who is in the business of football, to say that. But, yeah, you shouldn't. I mean, human bodies weren't made to go to war like that, basically, on a, a weekly basis for 10 years of their life. You're going to get hurt. You're going to break down. It's going to destroy your body. Not, not the silliest thing in the world to say, but stupid for a man in his position to say it nonetheless. So that's caused a little controversy. And uh, I believe Rex Ryan's had something like this to say, like something like uh, football is the greatest goddamn sport in the world so everyone else can lick my balls or something. Something Rex ryan -y. Uh Looks like Packers are saying goodbye to John Kuhn. Is they're not going to be bringing him back this season. The uh, aging fullback is going to try to probably latch on elsewhere, but it's going to be tough for him. Not a lot of teams using the, a true fullback, and at his age it's just going to be tough. Packers got a roll with a uh, second-year man, Aaron Ripkowski, in his steed. We are 99 days until football returns, folks. We are under 100 days, so that is that is some goddamn good stuff. And since we are getting close, let's set it all up with a little bit of the fantasy corner. I want to go over uh, kind of a little primer uh, on fantasy here. For a lot of you who perhaps... Excuse me. Aren't familiar with the game. The types of leagues, you know, the variations, and what my preferences are. If you are setting up a league, starting a league for the first time. So there's really two basic kinds of leagues. There is a redraft league where you start anew every season. And you go through and you draft your, your team. And it's a new batch of players every year play. And then there's dynasty teams where you're basically running a franchise and you carry over a roster season to season. Um, in our case, in the dynasty league I run, you carry 20 players over every year on a roster of 30. So you have to make 10 cuts, and then you redraft 10 players at the uh, beginning of every year, carrying over 20. So it makes your decision-making um, a lot more in-depth. The, the trades you make impact not just you know this season, but you know, you're you know, four or five years down the line. You can also, therefore, make moves on young players, rookies, that, you know, might not have fantasy value this year or next year, but someone who you think is going to blow up if you have the bench space to uh, stash a guy. Um, in a redraft league, there are then the, a variation of that called a keeper league, where although you don't run a true dynasty, you are allowed to retain players from your previous year um, with a draft pick penalty. 
So it could be one player, two players, three players getting over that, and you're kind of getting into some sort of a quasi-dynasty. Um, traditionally, this would mean that you would sacrifice your first-round pick or second-round pick if you kept two and yada, yada, yada. That has changed the last couple of years, and I really like the format now where it adds a little more strategy to even a keeper league where you can keep a player and then get a one-round penalty based on where he was drafted the previous year. So... Um, let's say in my case, the team that I'm in, you drafted DeAndre Hopkins, New Hopkins last year in the fifth round. This year, you know, there's no way you're going to touch that man in the fifth round. Are you? No, his, his stock's up there. He's one of the top three receivers in the NFL right now. So if you're a smart player, you can, okay, maybe you have like in my roster, I have Aaron Rodgers. I love him. It's a two quarterback league. Uh, most standard leagues are one quarterback and the two quarterback league again, um, uh, quarterbacks hold a little bit more value. So, would I be better off taking Aaron Rodgers and wasting my first round pick on him? Or I could, even though I love my Packers, I can get another quarterback in that spot that it will be equal to his skill set. Or I may land him back again, depending on how the draft falls. And then I can get DeAndre Hopkins at a one round penalty, sacrificing my fourth round pick for him. That seems to be better. Maybe you had a guy... You picked up off waivers that you would rather have, uh, like um, Devonta Freeman, or you drafted him late, you know? I mean, then you can have him as your 10th round pick, your 8th round pick, something like that, maybe even later than that, depending on where he was drafted or if he was drafted at all last year. So it it opens up, it makes it a more of a skill-based game, makes the draft more interesting, so I like that. Like I said, the, the two-quarterback league versus the one-quarterback league, most standard fantasy leagues don't really value quarterbacks all that highly. Receivers and running backs are the way to go. In a two-quarterback league, however, if you're looking at a standard 10 or 12-team league, now quarterbacks uh, get bumped up quite a bit because there's only 32 starters in the league, and if at least 20 to 24 of them are getting drafted, you need one good one off the bat or you're screwed. Other big variations in leagues are PPR, meaning point per reception, and non-PPR. Uh, this means that any player who makes a catch automatically gets one point, making receivers much more valuable in a PPR format, which I prefer, versus a non-PPR league where then your standard running backs or anyone who's very touchdown dependent uh, gets more valuable. Now, in the leagues I run, I weight quarterbacks a little more heavily. I will give you <clears throat> uh, points for basically completion percentage. For every pass completed, you get one point. For every pass incomplete, you get negative one point. So you have a quarterback that consistently throws in the 60 to 65% range. You now have bonus points coming in for a position that generally didn't get those points. Quarterbacks are the most important uh, aspect of the game of football, so I think that the fantasy game should show that as well. So that's that. Uh, if you guys got any questions about fantasy, again, let me know via the various social media outlets that we have. And as the season progresses, uh, we'll definitely get more involved. I'm going to do another mock uh, maybe next week and bring that to you, if not definitely the week after, and break down my second mock of the year. We are led by very, very stupid people. Very, very stupid people. We cannot let it continue. No, we can't. That's why it's time for Big Ass Politics. So, um, let's just knock this presumptive nominee nonsense off. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. He will be the nominee barring death, basically. The, uh, the GOP can't fuck him over at this point in time. He's got the delegates to go around. He's got the, the popular vote to go around. So... All eyes now shift to the Democratic race. And uh, right now, Hillary and Bernie are neck and neck in California, which has a lot of tasty delegates. Bernie still trails uh, by a bunch, however, because of the silly Democratic system of uh, super delegates. So Hillary is most likely going to go and face Trump, which I don't have a problem with. I really see that Bernie would probably give him more of a fight because he has a lunatic fringe, very motivated base. Well, Hillary is nothing but apathy and kind of, eh, she's a Democrat, so I'm going to vote for her. Which is the shittiest reason to vote for anyone, especially a criminal like that bitch. But, hey, maybe the FBI will do us a favor 
and uh, indict her. As that's getting closer and closer, they uh, it's not looking good for her. Another report came out that the FBI has found that she was indeed negligent uh, of the way she handled her emails. So, not to mention Benghazi, which she's gonna get hit over the head with when this finally goes heads up with Trump. And I think people are already starting to uh, the feel the Trumpy goodness. Because in a lot of these national polls now, if the race was to happen today, Hillary and Trump are neck and neck, which no one saw coming. And now in a lot of those polls, he's pulling ahead already by a point or two this early. That's only going to lead. There's nothing you can bring out of this man's. There's no skeletons that he doesn't fucking care about. I mean, there's nothing bad. He was never a politician. There's no sketchiness. He's a billionaire businessman. That's all you got to know. And he is going to make America great again. So... Like I said, keep that, um, yeah, and every Trump rally is now just met by horrific violence from the left. Um, the Bernie supporters, the, the Mexicans, the Black Lives Matter movement, all of them just, just doing their best to, to win votes for Trump by being aggressive, uh, incompetent savages. And every time they show that on TV... It, it makes the, 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 the working man that more much more likely to go cast a vote for uh, Mr. Trump. You always hear about, you know, the soccer mom vote, the hockey mom vote. Yeah, no, this time you're getting the uh, the blue-collar dad vote. That's who's coming out and voting for Trump. The, the blue-collar man, the Joe Sixpacks, they're not voting for Hillary, and Trump is getting them motivated, and they are still the most important voting bloc in all the land, so... Speaking of Black Lives Matter, somehow they turned the uh, stupid Jumanji the Gorilla thing into a race situation because it was a white baby and a black gorilla. Don't know if they realized what they were doing or if they were just trying to bait us all into uh, saying, haha, see, they're comparing themselves to gorillas. So I'm just going to leave that there. But those stories are out there that the, uh, the BLM movement sees the shooting of the gorilla racist. So you do with that as you may, kitties. All right, so other than that, what do we got going on here? We got... Uh, well, we're going to be in Chautauqua this upcoming weekend, taking another long weekend, uh, three days off there, to go chill at the lake house, get on a pontoony boat, do some fishing, some drinking, some eating, so that'll be a good time, going with a couple good friends, Dustin and Crystal, and uh, Val and Eric, so we're going to have a good time. We're also going to be celebrating our second anniversary while we're there, so that will be lovely. Um, I am falling apart, uh, falling behind, <laughs> falling apart. Falling behind on the new Marvel flicks. So, uh, I, I have not seen either the X-Men or the Avengers yet. Want to make it to the drive-in to see one, if not both of those. So at least now, now somehow the movies are, are, uh, staying more true to the goddamn comics and the comics, because I'm sure you all saw that Captain America in the latest release of said book turned out to be... A Hydra agent all along as they rewrote his past and made him a villain. So I don't think that it's coincidence that they took um, an American icon like that and someone who wore the American symbology symbology on him, the flag, the uh, red, white, and blue, and um, turned it evil, turned it into a Nazi. So way to go again liberal left assholes we'd see through your little charade and uh yeah so chris evans i guess he's now the real the real captain america and i'll keep watching the movies and uh following how those uh work out because it's, it's bullshit but whatever it's i'm an adult male i probably shouldn't be stressing over what fictional characters do in comical books, huh? Let's see what else. Oh, well, uh, you know how my wife is a, a crafty little little sprite, and uh, she's making Skittles vodka for our trip to Chautauqua, so that'll be fun. Basically, to separate the Skittles out into its various colors, put them in a jar, a mason jar, splash some vodka on there, and uh, let it sit and turn fruity, <laughs> and then strain them out. So we're going to get that going on. What else? I think I broke my toe the other day, folks, just to let you know that uh, I'm not I'm not impervious to pain. I stubbed my toe, and now it is purple and ouchy. So send me cards. I need your help. Uh, what else we got going on here? Um, we're probably busting out the old meat grinder tonight, as we're going to be grinding up some bison and pork to uh, make some 
hamburgers for the upcoming weekend and then whatever else you know grilling season's here so uh this the uh garage will be turned back from the podcast studio to the sausage factory so that's exciting then i do have one question for you folks let's uh yeah why not let's do this Time for the big ass question of the week. And uh, what I'm going to ask you is what does up to mean? Up to in quotes. What does up to mean to you, especially as it pertains to, say, the value of a coupon? Let's say you were going to a restaurant and it said, I don't know, hypothetically off the top of my head, that this coupon was good for a buy one, get one free sushi roll up to $9.99. Does that mean that this has a $9.99 value and you can get any roll, buy one, get one free, $9.99 and under? Or, as the English challenged, well, won't use any negative racial terms at the moment, Asian woman thought that it meant that it was good for anything over $9.99, so that when we ordered two rolls priced at $9.99, the coupon wasn't valid on them. She then claimed that she had worked there for many years, and this is always how coupon worked. To which I finally got pissed and told her that maybe her mastery of the English language doesn't work, but I know what the fuck I'm reading. And then I think I called her a uh, chinky whore. So, um, she did honor the coupon, and I honored her with a $0.0 tip because she was being a cunt, as they say in Asia. Asia, China, wherever the fuck she came from, fuck her. So anyways, yeah, if uh, you saw something labeled up to, what does that mean to you folks? How would you interpret that coupon? I'm assuming most of you are English as a first language out there, so um, probably come to the same conclusion I did. But uh, yeah, she was just a rude little fucking skanky bitch who was slow to wait on us and then bitchy with the coupon, so she also gets the uh, Big Ass Bitch of the Week award. Booyah. Unless you want something, motherfucker, get the fuck off our street. Oh, the language on you. You blow your father with that mouth? Yeah, see, that was that's the way she was treating us in the restaurant. That was actual recording from in the, uh, the sushi bar. So you can see why I got a little angry with her. I was just very, very rude. So let's do some reads, shall we? What do we got first here? We got Emily's A to Z Crafts. Yes, she can make anything from A to Z. Find it at eazcrafts at yahoo.com. Or uh, check her out on Facebook and Etsy. Uh, you know, just uh, search uh, Emily's A to Z Crafts there. She specializes in crocheted and baked goods, but uh, right now she's making chocolate suckers for her fundraiser uh, as we speak this very moment. So, yeah, she's, she's good at what she does. Uh, she keeps getting orders, so people are liking it. So why don't you do that? And, uh, yeah, hit her up. Put a little coin in my pocket, too, while we're at it there. How do you like that? So, again, please check out Emily's A2Z Crafts on Facebook, Etsy, or at Yahoo. If uh, you want to send her an email, that is the letters E-A-Z Crafts at Yahoo.com. Thank ya. Uh, next, let's give a shout-out to the Happy Guru crew, Josh and Candy. Uh, check out the hashtag Happy Guru Tattoo Butter. Uh, to see everything that he's getting tagged in, and it's a lot of shit. There's a lot of sponsored artists out there doing a lot of great work. And to see their full line of products, go to happygurulovesme.com. Again, we got to give them a shout-out, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to represent them at the War of the Roses Tattoo Convention. And I will uh, proudly represent them uh, anytime in the future they ask. So, awesome job, guys. And again, condolences on uh, the loss of your family pet. We do, uh, we here at the Big Ass Digital Family love our doggies so we know how much that sucks so we're sorry to hear about that happy guru team and last but not least even though I got a tattoo elsewhere I'm still going to give much love to the Tattoo Den and Dennis K Transit Road in Elma, New York check out the Tattoo Den on Facebook uh, to contact him, check out his portfolio and I get some work done he may not be at the big tattoo conventions but he's a great artist right here in town so uh, please check out that page on Facebook, that is the Tattoo Den, and uh, let Dennis know that Paul Easy sent you. Thanks. And again, I want to give a shout out to uh, 
Rob Holland and uh, Wolf of Stainless Tattoo Custom Tattoos out of Dallas, who uh, we we got chummy with there at the tattoo convention. They're good dudes. Check out their stuff. Uh, I believe you can find a lot of uh, Rob stuff as Bad Stainless on Twitter and Instagram, so you can check out all that he's uh, doing. Uh, an amazing artist. Just even if you don't want a tattoo, just look at what he's doing. He's a he's a fucking great dude. Show's going to be another day late next week. Like I said, as we are going to be vacationing down at Chautauqua Lake. So bear with me, folks. Like I said, we're going to get through this patch, and then I'll get back to running these things out like clockwork every Tuesday night. Make sure you also tune in to uh, Sports Untamed with Robbie W. A uh, new episode will be posted up on the Big Ass Digital Facebook page shortly. So uh, check that out as well. I can also tell you now that Couples Love Fantasy will make its debut this June. Exact day and time TBD, but uh, that show is a coming. And I'd just like to say a happy early anniversary to my lovely wife, Emily. This has been a tremendous two years, and I look forward to at least another 48. We got to make 50, babe. So, uh, yeah, happy anniversary to my lovely wife, Emily. I love you. Um, so, yeah, now how can you contact me? Well, you can uh, check me out at Big Ass Digital on Facebook. Just put that in the search bar, and uh, it'll come up. On Twitter, it is Big Polly Z. Polly spelled with an I E. Big Polly Z on Twitter.com. Snapchat, P E Z981 is my uh, snap tag. And Instagram, Polly underscore Z. Polly again spelled with an I E. So uh, make sure you check me out on the uh, social medias. As always, thanks for listening. Please be sure to follow the show on all the social media uh, apparatus. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, check it out there because we are putting the videos or the uh, the audio of the show up there, little slideshows usually. You can check out some photos and whatnot. And, of course, uh, make sure to tune in again next week because I will be here, so you better be here too. Until then, be well, do what makes you happy, and stay alive. Peace. And that's the way the news goes. Outlaw Country! Woo! This has been a production of the Big Ass Digital Podcast Network. Time to make the chimmy fucking chongas. Y'all know how I get down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah! Hey. Detroit! What? Brooklyn Zoo! Yeah! What? It's St. Cloud Bossy and ODB! Recording this dirty and it's stinking Funkier than Pepe Le Pew, so I was thinking about what? Dropping this single on the chart yeah. Letting you know, hey, the kid has heart I never deny myself, it's me and dope But in my last jam, I slept on my notes you Thought that I was weak? Huh, let me speak My rhymes come funky in your grandfather's feet So listen, mister, don't you ever forget The rhyme is dirty, you couldn't even clean it with Comet Or even Borax, some tried Ajax Only mix with the best 48 tracks, yo I get down with the ace on sounds Lyrics that be flowing from miles around So let the music shut your ass up And fill the uppercut that will make you fall to your butt I wanna get dirty and dirty I wanna get stinky and stinky And we gon' Let me continue, verse number two Style is wild, dirty, stinking like doo-doo If you're hanging around, you change your mind It is a bad influence, but yo, it's my rhyme I sit down and I say to myself So, yo, are you ready top shelf? I dropped a single for you to get a dose of As I lay back like a pillow on a sofa Getting paid, yeah, right, fully Fly asking BG, what, 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 you know me Sweet as a honeybee, tastes like a 40 Thinking like O.E. But it's drink old English, so I speak old English. It gotta be dirty and stinkin'. And if it's not, well, I guess I'm not. The A.S.O.N., my friend. It's dirty and stinkin'. I wanna get dirty and I wanna get stinky and I wanna get dirty and I I know my phone.
funky chicken Turning heads like an eight foot tropical mud chicken They fear these juggalo flows I'm dirty like Osama Bin Laden's toes I got hatchet love, it came to broad Chicken tin so hard I'm making neighbors I wanna get fall. dirty and take me home, it's late And don't worry about the ring in your tub It's the clown pain I see P and O Dizzle Wildin' Workin' like a fat chick's feet at King's Island I don't source nine mics I don't care, I'm a ten year vet Five black rat millionaire Wow.